come on, you take your seat, we're going to get started. So great to see everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, my name is Sue Parks, I'm the CEO of Orange County United Way, and again, we're thrilled that you're here today to learn this important information. Hello, and I'm Bex Hayko, the Executive Director of United to End Homelessness with Orange County United Way. And we'd like to thank all of you for being here, but we do want to do a special shout out for our elected officials here. So we'd like to say thank you for being here. Senator, uh, State Senator Tom Umber, just saw you. Thank you. <laughs> Orange County Supervisor Katrina Foley. <laughs> Wayne Park Mayor Art Brown. Irvine Mayor Vera Khan. Yeah. Tustin Mayor Pro Town Letitia Clark. Is Letitia here? Okay. Okay. Newport Beach Council members Robin Grant and Lauren Kleiman. So again, thank you all for being here. I'd also like to recognize representatives from the offices of Congresswoman Porter and Assembly Members Valencia, Davies, and Chen for joining us as well. Again, thank you all for what you do for the community. And as we begin, we want to thank UCI School of Social Ecology and this entire university team for creating this beautiful space for us to meet this afternoon. We have more. Um, so we um, now wanted to do a brief video from our chair of our council um, of United to End Homelessness. So please watch a message from Larry Armstrong. Hi everyone. I'm Larry Armstrong, chair of the United to End Homelessness and vice chair of Orange County United Way. I'd like to welcome you to the release of the OC poll presented by the UCI School of Social Ecology. Several years ago, the UCI cost study provided Orange County with critical data that helped inform our goals as we launched the United Dead Homelessness. Now the OC poll will similarly raise awareness to the issues that matter most to Orange County residents. I look forward to the response of the attendees and finding new ways to work together and homelessness in Orange County. Thank you. I am so excited to be back here at UCI, filled with this room of the most influential leaders in Orange County. Many of you were here five years ago, but on the other side of the campus, we launched United to End Homelessness with Chancellor Gilman. And I'm just curious, show of hands, who was here that day? Quite a few of us, yeah. It has been quite the roller coaster and the ride since we launched United to End Homelessness. And I'm so proud that such a passionate group of community members and corporate leaders came together to form the United to End Homelessness Leadership Council, many of whom are here today, along with our colleagues from the Orange County United Way Board. Thank you for being here this afternoon. We are so fortunate to have representatives from education, philanthropy, healthcare, business, government, faith, property providers, and many more that all come together to address homelessness. Over 150 organizations make up United to End Homelessness. And again, thank you for being here, and thank you for the support that has helped us to raise awareness on homelessness in Orange County and create innovative solutions. And while progress has been made, there's certainly more work to be done, which is why we were thrilled when UCI approached us about this poll. It's been five years since our launch, and it's important for us to have our finger on the pulse of our community, to know what they are thinking, what they are feeling when it comes to these issues. The respondents to this poll are our neighbors, they are voters, they are family members and friends. And as you'll learn today, homelessness and housing affordability are top of their mind. So we need to lean in, listen, respond, and invite them into our efforts as catalysts for change and to become part of the movement to end homelessness in Orange County. 
So as Bex mentioned, we launched United Tan Homelessness here at UCI five years ago, and we are so thankful for their ongoing support and commitment. They've really just been an amazing partner. Some of you might remember that the basis of United Tent Homelessness came from the cost studies. Everybody remember the cost study? And that was done out of the School of Social Sciences. I'm not sure, is Bill Maurer here today? Yes. Bill, thank you. Thank you for your leadership in, in having that cost study. It really changed the conversation. It made people understand besides the humanity, which is absolutely so paramount, there's also a fiscal responsibility. There's a fiscal side of the story. And so again, thank you for illuminating that. So again, the conversation changed and there was a new lens when that cost study came out. And we were able to leverage UCI's research and bring new people to the table, as Beth, Beth mentioned, especially the business community who wanted to get involved with their innovative ideas. We were able to educate thousands of community members around homelessness and change the narrative in terms of who are our who are our homeless neighbors, our unhoused neighbors, and how can we help them, and equip them to be able to answer those questions that they were receiving from their families and friends. Um, this highlights the power of coming together, and it powers the importance of research coming from such an amazing institution as UCI in changing the dialogue. We are so fortunate to have them in our community, and so fortunate to have all of you that come together from all different walks of life to address such an important issue. So again, thank you. The presence of everyone in this room is really testimony to the importance of the topic that we're here today to discuss. And it's especially important because of the data that we're gonna hear about. And we all love good data. We all love to have the resources to understand what is really happening. So I am so delighted to invite up to join us Dr. John Gould, Dean of the School of Social Ecology at UCI. So John, please join me. And now I'm going to read just a bit of John's very impressive bio. Dr. John Gould is a distinguished scholar in justice policy, social change, and government reform. He has held key positions in the U.S. Department of Justice and the National Science Foundation. In 2022, Gold became the leader of the nation's only school of social ecology. Yes, I said woo hoo for life for that school of social ecology. The school was established in 1970 in response to high demand for more socially relevant research. His expertise covers justice policy, social change, and government reform. He is the author of five books and more than 100 articles and reports on such diverse subjects as erroneous conviction, prosecutorial innovation, police behavior, hate speech, sexual harassment, and international human rights. He is truly a leader. John, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you much. Thank you very much, Sue. On behalf of the University of California, Irvine, it is my pleasure to welcome you to campus. As some of you may know, UCI, well actually, I think all of you know at this point, UCI is Orange County's leading research university, and we are absolutely delighted to be able to host this event today. Now, what some of you may not know is that UC Irvine has been ranked by both US News and Forbes as one of the nation's top 10 public universities. We are also ranked number one by the New York Times for the university that is doing most to help students achieve the American dream, and indeed, we are now a Hispanic-serving institution. As Sue mentioned, I am the dean of the School of Social Ecology, the only school of that name in the country, and the school that kind of has a little bit of a funny name that people don't automatically know what it is that we are about. But what we seek to do is connect research and teaching with the needs of policymakers, practitioners, and the community. If there is an issue that affects the quality of life here in Orange County or elsewhere, we work on it. But we don't just study social problems, we try to help solve them. And we do that by collaborating across fields and working in partnership with those outside the university. Now, one of the things that makes us distinctive is our integrative approach to addressing those social problems. 
So it's not enough, in our view, to ask about the problem of an individual, about why it is that someone's having trouble with anxiety or depression, about a child's psychological development, or about why someone is experiencing homelessness. We cannot, we cannot ask the question in isolation. We also need to be asking about the health of the community if we're asking about the health of individuals. What are the levels of crime and the kinds of crime to which people are exposed in the community? What about food and housing security? Is there economic opportunity? What about the competence of governments? And if we're going to ask those questions about the health of the community, we also need to be investigating the health of the environment. Is there clean air and water? What are the effects of extreme weather events? Do people have access to natural resources that are sustainable? So this mindset is baked into the DNA of our school and it necessitates, as we say, that we be relevant. We are called to engage with government, with NGOs, with even industry to help understand and solve those problems. All of this then brings us to today's launch of the UCI OC poll. For those of you who've lived in Orange County for a while, you may remember that our, our school sponsored such a poll in the 1980s and 90s under the direction of then Professor Mark Baldessari. Mark eventually left to become the president and CEO of the Public Policy Institute of California, and the poll later transitioned to the California poll. Well, 25 something years later, Orange County has now grown so substantially that we would be, were one of the most populous counties in the country. Indeed, if we were a city, we'd be the third most populous city in the country. We are also one of the very few truly purple counties in America, and we are probably the most well-known purple county in the country. <laughs> We were talking about this at um, uh, breakfast, a few of us today. If you can name all six or seven of the truly purple counties in America, you will win a prize. We are by far the most well known. We are a place where the left and right not only have to not only live together, but need to find ways to collaborate to get things done. So as the county has grown, leaders need reliable methods to track and analyze residents' concerns, their views and their priorities on a variety of pressing issues so that we don't have to rely on anecdotal understandings or the views of the few people who show up at city council meetings. And we are all in favor of people showing up at city council meetings, but we need reliable data on what a broad swath of Orange County residents think. So today, the School of Social Ecology is stepping back into this sphere by relaunching the UCI OC poll. This is not political polling, but instead it's an opportunity to provide reliable data on key issues that will influence future investment, business activity, and community operations in the county. We also hope to leverage the university's role to engage leaders in business, government, and the community to discuss and apply the findings from the poll. We want to help to ensure that those results are used to help move the county forward. This is not merely an exercise to describe what people are thinking, but it is a collaborative project to bring leaders together to address pressing issues. And in this spirit of collaboration, we have been delight, delighted to partner with the United Way and its United to End Homelessness campaign. The next topic after this one will be the concept of supposed brain drain in Orange County, and we would be delighted to work with any number of you and some of the organizations that you represent on that. But for this first iteration on homelessness and affordable housing, we really could not have had a better partner. And indeed, there are many, many hooks who are responsible for today's soup. Thanks, of course, go to Sue Parks, to Bex Hayhoe, to Michael Shepard, and Amy Leaf at the United Way, who've been remarkable partners. Here at UCI, we've had Professor Alejandro Reyes, Nick Morantz, and Jay Hong Kim, 
who've been involved in helping to construct the survey. I know one of these faculty members, Professor Morantz, is here today. We owe him a great deal of thanks, as well as many others who've been involved in the construction of the questionnaire and the analysis of the results. The poll itself is a collaboration, too, for we have partnered with Ken Goldstein, who is the Senior Vice President for Survey Research and Institutional Policy at the American Association of Universities. The AAU represents America's leading research institutions, and the, uh, and the University of California is a member of that. Ken, um, if you wouldn't mind coming up here as I begin to go through a little bit of your bio. I've had the opportunity to know It's like a bar mitzvah, right? It is. Today you were a man. Today you were a man. Stand here awkwardly. You're doing it beautifully. Okay, you can tell the two of us have known each other for quite some time. Uh, I, I was going to say, I have known him for many years um, since we were uh, very young academics, which is what, a decade ago? Exactly. Not very long. Um, Ken is really one of America's leading experts on political campaigns and advertising. Uh, he was a longtime professor who has since moved in house. He combines impeccable methodological skills with practical application in Poland. At least I got that from your mother's bio on your name. He is more, more seriously. He is a consultant for ABC News on their election night decision team. And he has worked on network election night coverage in every US federal election since 1988. Um, Ken is going to take us through the findings of the poll, and both he and I will be available afterwards to answer any questions and any follow-up um, that people would like to have. So with that, Ken, I hand it all over to you. Great. Thank you very much, John. Thank you. Hi. Uh, hit that. All right, that's the title slide. That's me. Um, th thanks, to, uh, thanks to John for the kind words and introduction. Uh, mentioned that I'd worked on uh, network election night coverage in every federal election since 1988, so I'm not only old enough to... Uh, I'm old enough to remember not only when Orange County, which is purple now, but when the state of California was actually purple and was, uh, was competitive in, uh, in presidential elections. Um, let me just say one second about the uh, Association of American Universities, the AAU, which everyone gets confused with the high school basketball feeder program for all of you who are disappointed that that's not what we're going to... That's not what we're going to discuss today. Um, we are a consortium of America's leading research universities, of which University of California, Irvine is one. We do lots of strategery and politics on behalf of research universities. Um, it brought me on to do um, a polling, um, and this is one of the first times we have done public-facing polling. I'm really pleased to be able to do that, and really pleased to be able to um, connect with, uh, with my old friend, uh, John Gould. Dean Gould about, uh, about, about this. Um, this, is the, this is the nerdy slide. Uh, you can see I'm a nerd. If you want to answer any other, ask, ask any other specific questions about it, I had a chance to talk with some people at breakfast and a little bit here before about some issues and challenges in polling. Um, we were in the field earlier this summer. We talked to over a representative sample of over 800 Orange County adults. Um, as you know, and for those of you who do a little politics, you know, polling can be fraught and, uh, and difficult. Um, we used a, a hybrid methodology in which we used panel, which we used voter file, which we used cell phone, yes, landlines, some people still have landlines, uh, text to web, and email to web. And I'm confident that we have a representative and valid sample of Orange County, which we then weighted to the correct demographics of the uh, of the, uh, of the county. Um, what's the biggest problems facing Orange County? And so, I hope many of you look at this and find it interesting and compelling, but some of you may look at this and go, okay, we, we knew that, right? You, you, thought, you, you thought a little bit we knew that, right? Honestly. Um, you know, so, homelessness and lack of affordable housing, very much at the top level. That is completely different. So there's, we have mayors and city council and board of supervisors here. These numbers, if you were in other cities, other counties, other states in the country, would look completely different. So if you were in a Wisconsin or a Michigan or a Pennsylvania, it would be aging infrastructure and the quality of K-12 education would be at the very, very top. Lack of affordable housing and homelessness probably wouldn't even uh, wouldn't even show up. 
So even though you sort of knew the answer, this is giving you empirical evidence. And even the magnitude of that answer is striking to me. I don't see in other areas, in the homelessness or lack of affordable housing is not the problem, but I don't see their biggest problem that, because the way to say it, it's that big of a problem as it is perceived here in, uh, in, uh, in Orange County. Oh. All right, supervisor, you can look a little carefully. What's your number? Number five. Number five, okay. The fabulous fifth. The fabulous fifth. You're in it. Um, so um, we, um, we wrote down the results in, uh, uh, in, a, in a number of, uh, of different ways. So here you can see, while there are overall, um, in every single of the supervisor districts, a majority think homelessness and lack of affordable housing are problems, a massive majority. There is variance with the fourth district, right? I'm just, just learning my California here, closer to closer to LA County, where it is where homelessness as seen as a bigger problem, but actually lack of affordable housing is still a majority, but less than some of the other areas. I was wanting to sort of think about how people were experiencing homelessness or how they're experiencing people who are experiencing homeless. And um, if you remember when we were designing the questionnaire, we sort of struggled over these two questions quite a, quite a bit. So the first one's actually pretty straightforward. So just like if you go about your day, how often do you see someone who is experiencing homeless? So 54% of people say every day they see someone who is experiencing homeless. Again, because you are here, you might go, yep, that is a stunning number to me as someone who is coming from outside of California, outside of, of Orange County. And if you add the every day and the every few days, right, you're at nearly eight out of 10 people are, are seeing that. The question we struggled with a little bit was the interaction, right? You know, what does that mean? Walking by and averting your eyes because someone's trying to talk to you, actually engaging, engaging with someone in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in some sort of meaningful way. But it's sort of interesting and a little bit sad to me, I guess, where 54% of people are saying that they are seeing someone experiencing homeless every day, 15% are interacting in some way. That said, an interaction could be positive, an interaction could also sadly, um, sadly be, um, be negative. And then here you see significant variance in where people are uh, experiencing uh, people who are, uh, or seeing people who are experiencing homelessness, which in the fifth district, it's 34% every day. In the second district, it's 68% every day. I'm sure we have people from every district here. I don't know the specifics and the substance of the districts, but you know, talking uh, talking with John, he said this this, this made sense. Some gut validity, uh, some gut validity to uh, to him. Um, you know, one thing that John said, and um, you know, I'm not going to repeat it, but he really gave. I might have to steal some of it. A really great rationale for why we do polling. So listen, I'm doing election polling for ABC News. I'm calling I'm calling races, but the real value of polling is for elected leaders to get a little more signal on what people think. I'm sure you're hearing from seven or eight people who are on Twitter all the time, right? And so this is trying to give you some information about what everybody, um, what, uh, what, what, what everybody thinks. But it's also the case, um, and again, I keep pointing to my political colleague friends over here, like, you know a pollster who just goes, Oh my God, supervisor, we're in really bad shape here. Thanks, see ya. That's just annoying, right? What you want to hear, or, or mayor, we got all these problems. Bye, I'm out of here. You also want to hear what some what some solutions are. So we tried to also test some messages and some possible solutions. So we again we debated a couple different ways of asking about this, and we decided to do it as a bond measure, saying, hey. What about a bond measure that would raise their raise their taxes to solve a variety of problems? So 
60% said they would strongly support, 24% somewhat support. So 84% said they would support some sort of bond measure that would raise their taxes to try and reduce homelessness. So listen, in reality, if you threw this on a if you threw this on the ballot, do I think the result would be 84 to 16? No. Okay? I think they're all going, no. Okay. But the way I look at this is improving K through 12 education is a really important thing, right? Hiring more police officers, improving or building new infrastructure, hiring more social workers, offsetting carbon emissions. In comparison, you see that people are most likely to say they are willing to pay more in taxes to reduce the problem of homelessness. Again, that's different from saying if you threw it on the ballot, you're going to win 90 to 10. But in comparison, not only when we ask people it's the most important problem, they're relatively willing to put their money where their mouth is more on it as well. Um, in a world, sadly, at least I come from Washington, D.C., where Democrats and Republicans agree on nothing, you even have majority support here for, from Republicans for supporting a bond measure that would increase taxes to reduce homelessness. Certainly a little bit more support from Democrats, but I'm really used to looking at everything. I'm going to show you some more data here in a second where it's 90 10 on, uh, on, on each side, and people are, uh, people are completely polarized. Sort of flippers here. Um, This is a busy slide, and so I didn't know how to make it less busy because we asked about lots of uh, lots of solutions. Um, and I believe it's the case um, we're putting these we're putting the results on the web, the slide deck on the web, so um, you'll be able to uh, look at it because you're talking really quick. The slides are really small, um, so you can look at them uh, you can look at them on your own. A couple interesting things here. Um, I'm a big fan of looking at the more intense answers, so the very effective or the not effective at all, and less on the more on the, on, the, on, the, on the middle answers there. So you see the top tier here, providing more mental health services and treatment, and treatment to people experiencing homelessness. Right, so if you're gonna raise some money, where do they want the money spent? Building more long-term housing, building more affordable housing, but what's also really interesting to me here is what there's not support for, which I would say are probably the positions of the more, um, what's the right word, more, more partisans on each side, right? So one group on the left, we just need to provide more cash payments to people experiencing homeless. Plurality think that's not at all effective. I mean, 9% think that's very effective. Just bust them out of Orange County. Okay, which there's a segment of the population that thinks that. Only 10% think that's very effective. 40% say not at all effective to that. We did some splits where you're asking after respondents one way, after respondents the other way. So we asked after respondents this cash payment. And as I just said, not support for cash payments. But if it is couched, and not only couched, if the program is designed as providing rent vouchers to people who are experiencing homelessness, there is significantly more support for that. The mental health challenges in this country at all levels, in all places, and especially among our young people, are, are, are profound. And it is clearly a big driver of uh, the homelessness problem. And again, you see, in a world where Democrats and Republicans agree on nothing, and John, his introductory words say, this is a purple county. People, Republicans and Democrats and independents got to figure out how to live together, got to figure out how to govern, govern together. I ask a lot of questions. I always break it out by party ID. And there are very few questions where you see no substantive or statistical difference in the positions of different partisans. Another way we asked about it is 
So it's really easy for people to say there are, you know, there are four various solutions is, okay, here's that same set of solutions. Which one would you not want at all? And so that very effective is from the previous question, but then we ask the one opposed. And again, consistent with what we saw, there, the one that people really don't want to do is direct cash payments or bus them out, out of mind, right? Out of sight, out of mind. There is strong opposition to both of those. These are caricatures, right? But you sort of hear, you know, I call these your uh, grouchy uncle at Thanksgiving messages, right? The know-it-all, right? Again, you're going, yeah, I know that person. And so on, you know, on both sides. So, you know, this is what, this is what we should do with homelessness, right? Or everyone has a right to live where they want. And no one should be forced to live in shelter if they don't want to, or forced to go into shelter. Or you just need to get tough on people experiencing homelessness. Here, you do see a bit of a partisan breakdown with Republicans wanting to get more tough and Democrats, but by less of a margin, right? So Republicans overwhelmingly want to get tough. Democrats only by 10 percentage points are privileging what we could call a civil liberties message. So what are causes of homelessness? Now this is the real grumpy uncle at Thanksgiving question. Whose fault is it? Right? And here you do see some partisan differences. And in some ways, you know, they're like, oh my God, 60, 60 20 on one side and 60 20 on the other. I'm sadly coming from a world where everything I look at is like 90 10 in terms of polarization. So this is polarized. There's no doubt that this is polarized, with Republicans much more likely to say it's because of bad decisions that people have made, and Democrats much more likely to say it's because of factors out of an individual's, out of an individual's control. Um, and independence pretty mixed there in the middle. All right, who's responsible for it? As we all look over at table six. <laughs> um, uh, where's the city council person? Okay, oh, there you go, okay. Uh, so, city council, board of supervisors, um, people are saying, hey, government, we think this is a problem, and we want you to solve it. And again, that might seem a little bit captain obvious, but occasionally, you know, I'll do polling when some people will say, it's a problem, but we don't think government can solve that, or it's a problem, and we don't want government involved. But people want you involved, but they also want you respects and you involved, right? You know, nonprofits and charities and other people in the community. And the way I look at this is, this is sort of an all hands on deck sort of response. So this is the again, sort of embarrassing finding. Again, even some of our friends might be like this. Yes, it's a huge problem. Yes, it's very, very sad. Now, do I want them actually living in my neighborhood? Not so much, okay? So I think as we hopefully do more work, and I'd be honored to be able to do more work, we can do more polling, not just to tell you what the problem is, but how we message to people convincing them. So when you're coming up with solutions, and I'm sure this is something you sadly run into in your work, how we can move these numbers. And this is it by supervisor district. You're not the lowest in the pit for the middle. A couple slides here. Um, one in five people in Orange County say they know someone who's currently experiencing homelessness. Doesn't necessarily mean they know someone here in Orange County experiencing homelessness. This is sort of a stunning number to me. And we talk about mental health in this country, that one in five people in the last year have had concerns about not being able to pay their mortgage. 
Do you think of sort of that stress on life and family when you have something like that? 52% saying of renters, that's a stunning number. More than half of people who are renting, and our data showed about 40% of our respondents, 40% of Orange County were renters, were concerned that they couldn't pay their rent. You then think about the stress that causes in a, in a, in a family when you, uh, when you have that. Even if you end up being able to pay the rent, even if you're not evicted, um, what, the, what the costs of that are. So now we're turning information to action. Um, so um, you know, thank you very much. I will be around later. I think you're all going to be going into group tables. Um, and John and I will be around. I'm happy to answer um, any other questions, methodological or substantive. Tell the political people some of the political questions we ask, which we do just to calibrate, just to make sure. And none of them were about you. Um, uh, it's about it's okay, I do my own poll. You do your own poll. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, uh, uh, it was just to calibrate our polling. So it was, a, it, was, it, it, it was a real honor to be here, a real, uh, real honor to be able to do the survey, um, and to do a survey that's not giving folks a horse race question, um, and super fun to get to connect with my friend John. So um, definitely turn over to you. Thank you. so much for that vibrant presentation of the data. So when we launched five years ago, homelessness was top of mind because of its visibility. People were seeing it. But now it appears that there's been a change in our community's consciousness. What struck me from the data was how close to home the issue of homelessness is for the majority of the respondents. With 55% of people knowing someone that currently is experiencing or has experienced homelessness in the past. 55% of people personally know somebody who has been without a home. And over half of our renters say that they were worried about how they were going to pay their rent and concerned that they could be evicted and ending up on the streets here in Orange County. These are the results, no doubt, of the compounding factors of ever-increasing rents, for limited housing inventory, wages not rising at the same pace, and the still lingering effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. People are hungry for results, and they are eager for solutions. So we know that there has been an enormous amount of effort and dedication that have been poured into addressing homelessness. And many of you in this room, this is your life's work, and we just want to thank you for everything you've been doing to help solve our homelessness for our homeless, our unhoused neighbors. Um, we just want to say for all of you who are service providers and all that, a round of applause for everything you do. progress here in Orange County, but we would all say that there is a lot more work to do. And it also sounds like we need to do a better job of telling about our successes and our stories and making sure more people understand what has been happening here in Orange County. There is good news in that 76% of people think that building more long-term housing for people experiencing homelessness is effective. That's great, and that's what our local data also shows. So that is a great start as we leave this room. And one thing that jumped out to me, and I'm sure it did to you, is that 85% of the respondents, respondents said they would support their taxes being increased to, in order to provide funding to reduce homelessness. And this had the majority support of both political parties. So it's inspiring me that people want to get together, that they want to work on this. It's important to the community here in Orange County and that we can do something very important together. And for all of us at Orange County United Way, we would say that's the OC way, OC pulling together to do the right thing. We know from experience the power that data can have to create momentum and bring about change. 
and you were invited to attend today because we value your leadership and your opinions. We want to invite you to be part of shaping new priorities and areas of focus and action for United to End Homelessness. Hopefully you noticed that at your table, you were seated with people from the same sector that you work in, and this was on purpose. And this is now the part of the program where we stop talking and you start talking. We want your ideas, your perspectives from your unique vantage point how do we take the information from this poll and turn it into action for good? And I'd like to invite Michael Shepard, our Senior Manager of Community Strategies, to come up and explain what you'll be doing. Thank you, Dex. What makes an event like this so special is that we're not just listening to the voices of our community, but we also have a chance to listen to each other. And then we at United to End Homelessness have a chance to listen to all of you as well as we plan the next chapters of our work together. Because we have a wide range of experts and experiences here, I'm looking forward to the ways that new ideas will bubble up, or things that we've been working on for a while might find new ways to talk about, new ways to see possibilities. At each of your tables, there is a packet that contains a copy, printed copy of the synopsis report, as well as a set of questions to guide your discussion. These questions should help to structure the conversation around your table. We may put a few tables together as well. I want you to think of these sheets not like your homework for the day, but as a way for you to make sure that you can express your thoughts clearly and that those thoughts can make their way into the work that we're doing together. You can add your own personal notes to start with, and then as the conversation unfolds, keep adding things that you hear that are interesting or new from your colleagues. No one person needs to be the scribe who's taking every single note because we're going to be collecting these after the event to put together into a summary that we'll make available to you. As we wrap up, you can put those sheets back into the envelope. We have about 45 minutes to do this entire process, so we don't need to rush. Take a few minutes to review those synopses, enjoy the conversation with each other, and that out of this time together, we'll be able to, uh, we'll step in a few, few moments for our time checks, and we want to thank you lastly for joining us today and participating as leaders who listen and as leaders who respond to help solve the issue most pressing in our community today. Thank you. I'll turn things over to our table host. I'm sorry, I should never interrupt a pause. <laughs> Uh, I'll turn things over. Um, we're all tremendous leaders at your tables, but there's a few of you have the packets um, to distribute those now, and we'll be moving throughout the room to help the discussion move along as well. Thank you so much for being here today. We're really looking forward to the notes you have to share. One, two. Sorry, it's part of the habit of being a university professor. Um, I want to thank you all for coming out here today and to come, in, come to UC Irvine to be part of this conversation and for the release of the UCI, UCI OC poll. We have been so honored to partner with United Way. Um, there are many people who played a role in this today. You have seen several of us, but I'd like to take a moment, and I hope you will join me in just a moment in a round of applause for the many people who've worked very hard to bring off this event today. Our media teams, our uh, event teams, there are many people whose names would go on that I think the two of us would like to thank. So I hope you will please join us in a round of applause. <laughs> now there will naturally be questions of what happens next. Um, one of the things I'd like to point you to is take this home with you. You all should have a copy of this. This is basically the summary of the, the poll. And we all look like we're old enough that we still remember how to use hard copy. But for those of us who are a little bit younger or who have moved uh, into the electronic age, on page two, actually um, on page two, at the bottom of page two, you will see links to where you can go online to read more about the poll and about the data on both of the organization's websites. If you have detailed questions about how the poll was done, about particular data, if the word crosstab means something to you and you'd like to see how some of this was broken up, 
or go down, look there, or please email me, contact any of us. One of the things I'd like to leave you with is, that actually came up at our table. So the question was, does any of this surprise you in the data? And some people said yes, some people said no, but the one thing that I heard that, of course, is something we all know about, and is, from my perspective, always a cause for concern. We tend to rely more often on anecdotal evidence. We talked to so-and-so, they said this. Or 10 people showed up for the city council meeting last week, and they all had this opinion. That's not necessarily representative of what our neighbors and fellow residents of Orange County think. And one of the reasons we have relaunched the, OC, the UCI OC poll is because we want to put reliable data in your hands about what people in the county truly believe, what's important to them, what solutions they've already thought of, what messages move them, and what areas are third rails. Because when we have that understanding, we are in a much better position to do something about it, rather than relying on what we think may be going on. And so we will be continuing to do polling here through the School of Social Ecology. As I said, the next poll will deal with this concept of supposed brain drain. If you are interested in that topic, I very much hope you will reach out to me and potentially be a partner with us in that. But for today, our biggest thanks is to our partner in this first poll, the United Way, and I will turn it back to Beth to take us home. We will be eagerly taking those brown envelopes from your tables and are excited to read through the notes. Um, I was at a table that was having some really good discussions, and so we are hoping, and if you haven't written your notes, now's a really great time to do that and get us your marks. <laughs> <laughs> so we are just, I'm, I can't wait to gather your insight as we help shape some priorities and some work for United to end. If you think that a friend would love to hear this information, not only can you send them the link to find that online, on August 24th at noon, we are doing a community chat. John is going to be one of our guests on that community chat talking about this poll, as well as Tommy Newman from United Way LA, who's going to be discussing how LA has taken poll results and turned that into action. So that's going to be a 30-minute discussion to help generate some more ideas about what could be possible for us here in Orange County to do with this data. Another great opportunity for you to get involved is Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week. Coming up in November, I know it's August, but November is going to be here before you know it. And if you're interested in using your voice to help spread awareness about homelessness, we want to help you do that. We'll provide you with everything that you need. If you want to chat to any of our team and get more information, they will be at that table. They're not there now, but I promise you they will be. The lovely Amy, who's in the back, waving. Hi, Amy. She would love to help get you connected to Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week. And so finally, just a thank you. I so appreciate that you took time out of your day to come to be here and to have these discussions and to generate these ideas. This is United to End Homelessness. It is all of us working together, and I look forward to continuing to do that after today. Thank you, everyone.